Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Fan Appreciation Month here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm checking out a horror movie from 2011. That movie is Megan is Missing. Now, I know, guys, I've said countless times, I'm not doing another one of these stupid movies where the only thing people can tell me is, oh, you know, it's just so shocking, it's just so graphic and disturbing. But this movie's a little bit different, you see, because with every other film that people have tried to pull that stupid shit with, they say that the whole film is nasty and disturbing and yada yada yada. Whenever people talk about this one, they only cite the last ten minutes or so. They say, oh my god, man, the ending, the ending is the most disgusting thing ever, ever put on film and it's gonna change your life. And then when I ask them about how the rest of the film is, they never really respond, which I'm going to assume is a sign that the rest of this movie is complete shit and that they're basically just trying to sell me on ten fucking minutes of crap that probably is not going to shock me because, like every other time people have told me that a film is disturbing or shocking, it's anything but. But hey, I have no idea. Uh, I do have to mention, though, besides the uh, rather weak weak, stupid-sounding premise on the back, we also have a warning at the bottom of the case. The warning reads as follows. This film contains scenes of drug use, sexual assault, and frank language. Oh, heaven forbid we have a movie with frank language. Oh, how am I going to sleep at night knowing that I'm going to watch a film with frank language? Ooh. And is... <laughs> and is not intended for persons under the age of 18. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Basically, guys, that one law, or that two-sentence run, run there, is basically shorthand for we were too fucking lazy to go to, to go to the MPAA and actually get this fucking, fucking thing rated, so just, so just trust us, it's nasty and sick and icky and you shouldn't show it to kids. You guys can tell I have no hope on this, but you know what? I think, I think the best thing for me to do is to just plow through this stupid thing, see if there's any kind of redeeming value at all. Good lord, I hope, I hope there's at least something here. And then I can pretend I never watched it. Or, or, if it's actually good, I can throw it, I can throw it on my DVD collection and I'll have it, and I'll have it always. The only way, though, guys, I'm going to find out if this fucking thing is any good at all is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Megan is Missing. Alright, I have a bit of a stupid question. So, this whole thing is supposed to be cobbled fucking together from, like, webcam footage and cell phone chat, well, video cell phone chats, and all this other shit. Uh, then how, if this is supposed to be almost like a like documentary sort of thing, did they get this footage of this party that was shot by some random asshole who was already at the party before Megan and Amy even showed up? Moreover, while I'm on the subject of stupid questions, uh, if everybody in this film is supposed to be like 13, 14, 15 years old, why the fuck do all of them look far older than that? If you really wanted this thing to be some kind of like a cautionary tale against teens and fucking danger, it would help if they actually look like the age you're trying to claim that they are. Otherwise, your film just comes off as kind of stupid. You know, guys, this would probably be a little bit more watchable if the acting wasn't so absolutely abhorrently bad. Like, I don't know if this thing was, like, properly scripted, or if it was all fucking improv, but what's here is awful. It also, again, and I know I mentioned this earlier, but it would be nice if our actors look closer to the age they're supposed to be playing instead of two or three years older than that. It kind of sort of ruins the whole, you know, based on, like, based on fucking actual, you know, events bullshit they were trying to pump into the start of this film. But still, guys, I think the big issue is nobody here can act. Or, nobody here can improv. I'm still not entirely certain which yet. But this scene's coming off ridiculously scripted, and it's poorly scripted at that. I'm really curious, guys. Is anything interesting going to happen in this movie? I totally understand that everyone told me, Oh, you know, you know, the ending, the ending, the ending. Well, the ending, honestly, is not going to mean a whole thing fucking lot if there's nothing before it. My god, man, this movie is mind-bendingly dull. Like, it has been going on for almost 40 minutes. There hasn't been a single interesting thing in this entire 
fucking movie. Like, there's been nothing here that could be interesting or even seen as interesting in any way. My God, this really fucking sucks. This goddamned ending had better be the best... This had better be the best fucking ending I've ever seen in any movie, or I may get a little pissed. I'd like to say right now, guys, all of this news footage isn't helping the story any. But then again, the story is kind of flimsy and shit in the first place. But every time that we cut to this stupid to the stupid news show, my child is missing, it brings the story to a screeching halt. Because now they're showing a reenactment of the same stupid security camera footage they showed us four fucking times earlier in earlier in the film. Oh, and they're trying to make it all you know, all fucking like, all fucking like dramatic with jump cuts and it's flashing red and yeah, none of this is fucking work. God, when will this movie fucking end? Is this seriously it, guys? Is this piss weak bullshit ending seriously the thing that everybody was telling me is oh so horrible about this movie? No. It wasn't, well, I guess horrible is a good way to sum it up, but most people meant in more of a disturbing or sick fashion. There was nothing sick here. I've seen nastier shit in children's films, guys. This is bullshit. This, honestly, guys, is making this whole fucking experience even worse. This ending sucks. Now, mind you, there's still about 15 minutes left of the movie. Hopefully it'll be able to do something of interest in those closing 15 minutes. But right now, I kind of doubt it, and I feel like I've wasted my time watching this fucking thing. So, do you guys want to know what's happened since last time I spoke? Nothing. We're still on the same static shot of some fuckhead digging a goddamned hole. And Amy's in a barrel saying something, but you can barely understand what the fuck she's saying because the audio mix is shit. My god. Oh wait, is he finally done digging? Oh god, yes, he's finally done digging the fucking barrel. <laughs> or digging the hole to put the barrel in. Perhaps maybe now something interesting will fucking happen in the next couple of minutes. I fucking doubt it, though. Well, guys, that was Megan is Missing. No, I am not going to listen to these two stupid bitches talk as the closing credits roll. Fuck that shit. Well, do you guys want to know what happened? Uh, from the moment I said he was still digging the hole up until the closing credits? Well, uh, he takes the barrel, rolls it into the hole, buries the barrel, and walks away. The end. I don't know what the fuck else to say, guys. Everybody sold me on this ending being the most gruesome thing in the history of film. It's a fucking rape scene, man. It's like a two-minute rape scene in the middle of 22 minutes of garbage. And the film goes out of its way to inform me that it's 22 torturous minutes of bullshit by saying, and here is the last 22 minutes of footage on, on Amy's camera, uncut and unaltered. And then it's a bunch of shots that go on for way, for, for way too fucking long. Whole lot of shit that goes nowhere and does nothing. Jesus Christ. And uh, the rape scene. I guess the closest we have to shock is the fact that like halfway through the rape scene, Amy's face goes completely dead as her body goes numb to, be, to being raped. Which, granted, is kind of sort of disgusting. But I've seen it done in other films. I've seen it done better in other films. There is there is no shock here, dude. At all. Alright? Unless you've never seen a, you know, nasty film in your life, if you've never seen a cinematic rape scene in your life, then there's nothing here. Guys, I watched The Fucking Butcher, which had a POV rape scene, for Christ's sake. Ugh, that scene is still disgusting and fucked up. Uh, this is nothing. Alright? As much, guys, as I didn't like the film, Irreversible's rape scene had more power to it than this one did, okay? Why the hell am I focusing on that? Because it's the only goddamn thing that this, that even came close to being shocking, as much as people told me that the last 10 minutes, 20 minutes is the most shocking shit you'll ever see. No, it's fucking not. Now, why don't I step past the lies about shock and why I'm 
going to put my foot down. I'm done dealing with that. I got one more. Right over here. I didn't even want to put that one on the fucking wish list. I was kind of goaded into it. I'm going to cover that one. And then all this stupid gore shit can fuck right off. None of them have been any good. None of them know the first goddamn thing. Well, correction, most of them don't know the first goddamn thing about being actually gory or shocking. And the one I've got over here, um, yeah, that one is going to be more of the fucking same. But let's focus on Megan is Missing instead of me jumping on tangents here. Let's talk about the writing. I still don't know if this thing was scripted or if it was all improv. I, I do not know. Because there are a couple of scenes where... The dialogue is so wooden, you would swear to Christ that they were working with the script. And then the very next scene, everything seems to flow a little bit. The acting is still shit, uh, and the dialogue is still awful, but it sounds a little bit more natural. Uh, well, natural as in, it doesn't sound like they're reading off of a poorly written script. So I have no earthly clue. Maybe like half of it's scripted and half of it is improv. I have no earthly clue. Um... I can just tell you guys that the that the dialogue here is awful. This thing does not know how 13 and 14 year olds talk. All right. Besides the fact, and I, I, I was so bored with this goddamn movie, I actually looked it up. Our two leads are both in their 20s. All right. Megan and Amy, 14 and 13, according to the film, are both played by, you know, women in their 20s. And it fucking shows. Okay. I mean, you know, I was being kind of generous when I said they looked a couple of years beyond the age that they are supposed to be playing. No, no, no. They're both in their fucking 20s. And it becomes more and more apparent the longer that you look at them. Which this movie, which this movie pretty much forces forces you to do because the whole thing is based solely around these two characters. So that's all you ever fucking see. So, um, our dialogue is shit. It is, uh, once more, that's because it's either wooden and lifeless and overly scripted, or it's fucking improv and it sounds terrible. Now, going back to what I said earlier, writers have no clue here how children talk. I've listened to 13 and 14 year olds talk, okay? It normally is a rather dull experience, but most of them are not as foul-mouthed as the characters who are in this film. That's usually something I see in, like nine-year-olds who don't have their parents around who think it's okay to say fucking shit every other word because they can, because they can get away with it because their parents are nowhere to be found. By the time that you're 13 and 14, that's usually worked its way out of your system and you're a little bit more conservative with how you swear. Not always, but at least sometimes. So we have characters who talk like foul-mouthed nine-year-olds who are supposed to be 13 or 14 and are played by people in, in their in their 20s. Yeah, this movie's really off to a rip-roaring start, isn't it? Um, our characters. Oh my god, our characters. Um, I couldn't tell you a single character trait about Amy, and we follow Amy more than we follow Megan. Uh uh at the very start of at the very start of the film, it's it's very apparent that the only person who likes Amy is Megan. Why? Never says. Ever. There's never a given reason. But everybody else has to ask the same thing, and Megan never answers. Like, oh, well, she is my best friend. That, and that is why. Fuck you. I would have loved to have heard how those two became friends. But, of course, that wouldn't have worked in the re in the absolutely retarded narrative this movie pulled up of, well, we're going to base it entirely on Skype calls and video and fucking, like, video chats and, like, home video and crap. You, you know, at, at that point, then, you can't go back to when they were kids. Or, well, younger, since they're supposed to be 13 and 14. Sure. Um, you know, and see how they became friends. It would have been great. It would have been cool if we got that. Um... But we don't, so instead, everybody hates Amy. Amy apparently is a drag no matter where she goes. She comes off as this prissy, perfect little fucking, little fucking, like, Girl Scout who doesn't really do anything and really doesn't, and really doesn't go out and do anything wild, and so everyone see, sees her as boring. Megan, on the other hand, comes off as a massive whore who will suck, who will suck dick for drugs. She, she basically all but announces that very early on in the film. In fact, what I find kind of weird is this. In, like, the opening minutes, we see Megan as, like, this, like, mega whore who will fuck anyone, anywhere, anytime, is more than happy to fucking do it, and then we get her one lone bit of character depth 
where she admits that her father raped her when she was nine and continued to rape her for like three years. And when he went to jail, or it was like his, it was like her dad or her stepdad raped her for like three years. When he went to jail, her mom, Megan's mom, blamed Megan for that, which is why the two of them are on such rocky terms and why they both seem seem to hate each other. In like the two minutes you see Megan's mom in the fucking movie, um, that's it for character depth, guys. That is the closest thing. Is Megan for with absolutely no fucking with no real freaking provocation is like yeah um. And he fucked me when I was nine. He fucked me for three years. And there's no life to it. There's no life. There's no personality. There is no soul. It's essentially just a gigantic, gigantic exposition dump to try to explain why she's such a whore at the age of 14. Which just doesn't fucking work. And that's for every other character. Every other character is either just there for the sake of being there or they're a fucking bitch. When Megan goes missing... Uh... Everybody who was part of Megan's circle of friends all blame Amy. Why? I don't know. But there's a bit, because Amy got a camera for Christmas, and she's doing like a... Or, not Christmas, it was her birthday. Well, close enough, it was in fucking January, who cares? Uh, she got a camera for her birthday, and she's doing like this like video fucking journal, and she runs into two... Of Megan's friends. I have to specify Megan's friends because none of them like Amy, and that's never, it, it's never really explained why, but they just never did. And one of them begins to scream at Amy, saying that it's all her fault that Megan, that Megan is gone. The actress would have been a lot more believable if she, if she didn't look like she was on the verge of giggles every time she opened her goddamned mouth. But that honestly is more acting. And you know, guys, I could probably beat the fucking writing horse here. But you know what? There isn't anything to beat. There is no there is no writing here. What little fucking writing was done is very shoddily and terribly done. Um, so let's talk about the acting. Well, you know, again, I don't know if this was improv or scripted, and that's because, uh, again, with with fucking certain scenes, it seem it seems to flow a little bit more. But when it flows, everyone just swears every other you know word, which doesn't sound right. Um, and when it sounds wooden, it sounds incredibly scripted, and it just doesn't work then. It just, again, it, it is ridiculously lifeless, and when you're trying to make a film that looks real, and is supposed to be based on, is supposed to be based on actual fucking events, I want to know. I, I want to hear the case this thing is based on. I want to hear the case about two friends, age 13 and 14, who were kidnapped, tortured, and then both put and then put both put into a big blue plastic barrel and then buried in the middle of a park. Please, somebody link me to that fucking story. If you can't, then the closest thing this has to based on fucking actual events is. People are people are abducted every day by people they talk to on the internet. At least that's what this film is, is trying to say. I will, I'll get to the message part in a minute. But let's just try to focus on acting. It either flows and it's overly vulgar, or it's wooden, lifeless, and shit, and it kind of ruins the whole... It sort of ruins the whole, you know, realism element of this film. Speaking of the realism element, I guess I might as well talk about the film editing. Um, there's one thing, guys, that even that even a novice filmmaker learns way early on, and that is you do not hold on shots for longer than you need to. Okay? Why is it, then, that this film is almost nothing but that? If you were to cut all the bullshit, all the dead air, where it's just a shot of somebody's doorway after they walked out of a room, or you cut the 45 seconds of silence between them saying something and them and them either shutting off their and, and them either shutting off their camera or their computer or their phone or whatever the fuck device is recording them for that scene. You know, if you were to cut all of that, if you were to cut three quarters of the last 20, 22 minutes, because none of it has to fucking be there, because it's all dead air and bullshit, uh, this movie would probably be about 45 minutes long. Okay? Uh, so they padded the shit. Guys, half of this movie is padding. Okay? I am going to... I'm, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to walk you through the very end of the film again. Alright, Amy and Megan are both in a barrel. Spoiler alert, Megan is already dead, but you probably knew that all already if you were, if you were that far into the fucking film. 
And Amy's in there. Amy is Amy's mumbling something, but you can't fully understand what the fuck what the fuck she's saying, you know, for most of it because the sound mix is that terrible. But it's like 10 minutes straight of Josh, the guy who kidnaps them both, digging a fucking hole. Mind you, this whole thing, and I'm going to cover camera work here for just a sec, whole thing lit with one flashlight. For realism's sake. Yeah, you know, so you couldn't even get, like, stage lights to try to make the thing at least look a little bit better and still, you know, no, 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 no. Of course, we have to be fucking real, so we're going to just, so we are just going to put a little dim flashlight over here and we're going to light this scene that looks like it was shot at around 2 a.m. Sure, let's just fucking do that. Um... But anyway, he digs this hole for ten minutes. You you could have cut most of that. Like, you could have, um... Well, you could have fucking bumped up bumped up the sound of the girls in, in the barrel so, so we could fully understand what the fuck Amy was saying. You find the moments that are actually relevant and interesting, and you leave those in, and you just keep cutting. So that way then you see the hole get bigger and bigger and bigger without having to watch it naturally grow. And then he climbs out of the barrel, or he climbs out of the hole, he then takes the barrel, he sort of like rolls it over, and he tips it, he tips it into the hole, and then we spend three minutes watching as he reburies the goddamn thing and walks the fuck away. Roll credits. That whole scene could have been done in 45 seconds if the editor knew what the fuck they were doing. Another instance, uh, when Megan goes out to meet Josh uh, on the day, on the night when she vanished, uh, she walks out and then, in, and then it's just a camera shot of her fucking door for almost a minute. At least it felt like a minute. It, it may have been longer. It may have been shorter. But it felt like fucking forever. I think she walks back in at some point. I've, I, ha, my brain has completely blocked out everything except for the shot stayed on the fucking door for way too goddamn long. And they do this. Constantly. You could cut the runtime in half by cutting all of that bullshit. But no, 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 no. Because nobody is going to want to watch a 45 minute snoozer about this shit. No, 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 no. They want it to be an hour and 22. It has to be feature length. Fucking hell. While I'm on the subject of editing, let's talk about the news footage. See, guys, uh, they work in specifically this one news show. Uh, which apparently there's this new show in California, at least that's what this is trying to tell us, that is based entirely on missing children and seems to have a big focus on Megan because uh, everything that, that we see is Megan. The only other thing we hear is about this, is about this. I'm going to assume, black kid who was kidnapped at some point, but we, hear, but we hear a mention of it once and then it's never brought the fuck up again. And it's a character who we hear mentioned, mentioned earlier in the film, so apparently it's somebody else who has some kind of a connection with Megan, but nobody fucking cares because Megan is an attractive white teenager, and that's what people care about when it comes to missing persons. That's probably that's probably a bit of fucking like social fucking commentary that uh, kind of failed failed miserably because it was so heavy fucking handed. But let's just jump past that. Let's talk about the news footage itself. They tried to do something for the sake of realism, and they botched it. I mean, botched it badly. Because you see, guys, uh, for those of you who watch the news, there's normally like there's normally like a text crawl right here that gives you all the current news. Normally, a news station will have like a black bar over that, so that way then you can clearly read the text. They didn't do that here, and, and it's not just and it's not just the our er, and, it's, and it's not just the my child is missing show. There's also like one other news show that gets covered, and it does the very same thing. They don't have that black bar down there. So you see this yellow text and you can barely read it because it kind of bleeds into and blends into the actual like news, you know, banner a little bit too fucking well. Uh, five seconds would have gotten you a black bar on that fucking on that fucking overlay and you could have read what was what was there. Some of it almost seemed like it was trying trying to be humorous. It failed, of course, but that there, guys, is the lack of fucking attention to, to detail this fucking movie had. Is, you know, like, they, they really wanted it to feel so real by showing you news footage and then absolutely shit the bed when it comes to actually showing you what the fucking news footage should probably look like. It doesn't, and it doesn't even look like they use proper, like, news, like, news fucking station quality cameras. That is how cheap this is. Um... 
I've already, I've, I've briefly mentioned our, our, our sound mix. It's really only a problem when our two leads are in our, our inside that goddamned barrel. That's really the only time, guys, when the sound mix is terrible. Otherwise, everything else is fine. Uh, going back to the whole thing about realism, I do have to wonder, uh, why the fuck are these people doing random nothing with a fucking webcam going? I mean, because there is a bit where Amy is just in her room, and she's just, and she's just like, she's just like putting on makeup or some such shit. But there's no reason for a webcam to be there because she, because, because she isn't chatting with anybody. She isn't filming anything. She isn't shooting anything as far as we can tell. She never turns it off either. It's just there for the sake of being there. Uh, also, apparently the camera on your phone is on 24 hours a day, seven days a week because uh, that's how everybody talks. Nobody actually can just call on a cell phone. It all has to be video chat, because apparently that's what all teenagers do. I had no fucking clue. Guys, this movie's a fucking... This th this movie's a fucking disaster. I mentioned that this thing has got some kind of, like, a message to it. This whole thing seems to come off as, like, some kind of, like, a cautionary tale. Um, I'm going to assume that it's a cautionary tale about not meeting, not meeting strangers you meet on the on the internet which granted is sort of an in, which is sort of a decent message to send out there it's just this movie botched that so badly guys behold behold the reefer madness of internet predator film no 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 no, no. that didn't even right because reefer madness was actually at least funny this wasn't even that but that guys is sort of what i got here is somebody wants to do a film about the evils of about the evils of internet fucking predators, and they put about as much care into it as the douchebags who made Reefer Madness put into their into their shitty film, and it totally shows. Can I recommend Megan is Missing? No, I fucking can't, guys. This movie is trash from start to finish, and every person who tells you that that this fucking movie's ending is totally worth watching, no, it fucking isn't. There is nothing in this movie that is worth watching at all. That is a big fa- no, Guys, there's nothing. There is not even a single scene or a single line of dialogue, I can say, is worth watching. This movie is terrible from start to finish, from the first frame to the fucking last. It's awful. There's no way, I, there's no way I'm going to recommend this. This is by far one of the stupidest fucking things I think I have ever seen. It has no, it has no reason to be, the writing is, the writing is terrible, the pacing is apocalyptically bad, there is no reason to watch it. This movie sucks. Straight up. And every person who made this thing should be fucking ashamed for shoveling out a big steamy pile of shit like this upon the masses. Good God. Guys, I feared that that this movie was going to be bad, but you know what, I still had hopes. I had... The faintest hope that there was going to be something here, and there wasn't. This movie is a colossal letdown, and I hated every fucking second of it. Now, because it's Fan Appreciation Month, Megan is Missing came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in was Robert. Robert, I thank you. Um, after hearing all those people bang on about the fucking ending, I thought I was in for at least something interesting there, and unfortunately, I wasn't. But I wouldn't have known that dude if you hadn't have, if you hadn't have paid good money and sent this and sent this turd to me. And for that, I do thank you because, God damn it, dude, you honestly didn't 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 have to. And eh, hopefully, all this is made for an interesting episode of of reaction and review. I do thank you for that, dude, and you're fucking awesome. Please, guys, swing on over to Robert's Amazon profile page. Check out everything that he has written there. Oh my god. Um, this movie wanted to be a found footage film real bad. And it failed miserably. It wanted to be a horror film. It sucked at that too. It wanted to have a message about internet predators and it failed at that. You know what? If I'm not mistaken, there was a, there was a similar story involving like found footage and internet chats and horror shit. I believe that was on the first VHS. What the fuck? I'm just gonna go marathon all three fucking VHS films. That sounding pretty good right right about now. I need something better after suffering through this shit. Oh fuck me dead. Anyway, guys, with that we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.